You know, you could have a warrior cat called Bud Light. I prefer Mountain Dew, actually. <laughs> Pause here for title card. Dun -dun -dun. So, Warrior Cats has a lot of disabled characters, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're entirely free of ableism. Yeah, I guess they're a bit like the MCU that way. Oof, that's a topic for another video. So, let's go- That's what you always say about my <laughs> ideas. Because I never want to discuss your ideas. I just want to glance over them and move past them as quickly as possible. Your ideas yeah. suck. Very on trend for you. <laughs> so... In, what? Let's go over each of the individual cats that are disabled and their story arcs and the way they're portrayed and mm. the way they talk about themselves because there's a lot there. Yeah. Starting off, we have my favorite, Cinderpelt! Cinderpelt is the best cat. Well, one of them. There's like a list somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, so Cinderpelt gets into that accident with the car after Tiger Star is plotting to kill Blue Star. So, what really annoys me about it is that Cinderpelt's death, well, well almost death, and injury? injury wasn't so much used as a way to write about Cinderpelt's character, but she was more a pawn in the earlier arcs as a way to show how evil Tiger Star is mm -hmm. and the damage he could do to the clans. Yeah. And then the whole way she talks after she gets injured, she says stuff like mm -hmm. she wished she would die, that her life is over. That she can't re she doesn't see how she can have a purpose anymore. Yeah, a purpose that idea of having a purpose that shows up a lot with the disabled character story arcs mm -hmm. and makes yeah. me very angry. I guess all the cats do sort of view their general worth in direct proportion to their use for the clan as a whole, it's a very, it's not a very individualistic society. No, I guess it's not, but it feels like it has a lot of tie-ins with the way, um, capitalism treats disabled people. Like, if you don't have a purpose, and if you can't turn a profit, then you're not worthy of life. Yeah. And that's kind of the same way that Cinderpelt talks about herself for a long while. Yeah, and even if, I guess even if it does have, like, world-building justifications, like, in-universe and in-text, still, like, a kind of, not the best way to frame it. Yeah, and then there's the whole bit about Cinderpelt being reborn as Cinderheart, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. after Cinderheart gets injured again after falling out of the tree, and, like, Leaf pools like she can't be she has to be a warrior again she must be a warrior and then she's saying that to Jay Feather who's blind and uh, thus also cannot be a, cannot be a warrior and feels uh, and had actually also wanted to be a warrior specifically so it and it feels kind of like Leafpool's looking down on Jay Feather, and, and, and you can tell in his internal monologue that he really mm -hmm. internalizes it. <laughs> yes, Because very it clever. bothers him for, like, the rest of the chapter. He mm -hmm. just thinks about that, and, like, does, does Leafpool know, see me as broken as well? You know, in hindsight, once he finds out that Leafpool is his real mother... That oh! must really sting. Like, oh my god, yes. Mm -hmm. And then one thing about the medicine cats, like, I, I know they're all spiritual guides of the clan. Yeah, so it's like an important role, but also one that a lot of 
the disabled characters seem to be shoehorned into. Like, this is your only option now. Yeah. You have to do this. this like, it's this or the Elder's Den. Yeah, like, Jay Feather just did not want to be a medicine cat at all. And, yeah. And the way that was handled was not good. But it, it, it kind of creates another problem. Where the disabled characters are just there as the wise mentor guide characters. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, a common trope for disabled people. Like, they're, they're the ones who see the world in a different way. And, like, they're more optimistic. And they have much wisdom because of their suffering. They're an inspiration they're to an all inspiration of us. They're an inspiration to all of us. And so, like, a right. lot of the disabled characters who get forced into the medicine cat position have that role. And that's kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, speaking of Jay Feather, Jay Feather's the next on the list! You have a list? What do you think all these pages of notes are, Steph? I just assumed that was the ramblings of a diseased mind. <laughs> No, offense. are you even here? I don't. I can't tell. I can't tell. Is there somebody here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, about that. I'm sorry okay. for insinuating that. All right. Uh, Jay Feather is unique in that we don't have very many cats who are born with disabilities. Mm-hmm. The story usually goes that they become disabled. Yeah, and I think. I mean, what was that one kit, Snow Kit, that died? Oh, Snow Kit's on the list. We're gonna, we'll get to Snow Kit. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, he's one of the few that are actually born disabled. And he survives. A lot of times when there is a cat that is born disabled, they die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I really liked how... I don't know, just feisty and like, I'm gonna do what I want to do. I want to be a warrior. Yeah, before he gets, like, beaten down by life, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's really his arc. Like, he has to settle for being a medicine cat. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get to choose it. It's forced upon him. But what I don't get is, okay, so you have Jay Feather working with Brightheart. Why doesn't Jay Feather work with Longtail? Yeah, because Longtail is also blind. Of course, Longtail has been in the Elder's Den since Firestar's quest, so... Look, if he can survive the journey to the lake, he, he can he can handle teaching Jay Feather. Mm-hmm. And he also... I mean, he's he was still a warrior, too, so he should... He should be able to, like, help Jay Feather. Yeah, exactly. And Brightheart needs another apprentice. Like, she just gets forgotten about? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then a lot of Jay Feather's internal monologue, even though he doesn't know what it's like to be an able-bodied cat, until he becomes J-Wing for a little bit, is just this, like, internal, constant looking down on himself and, like, oh, I'm useless and all that. Like, at his, um, apprentice ceremony where he becomes the apprentice to Brightheart, he's like, well, let's lump all the useless cats together and hope a tree falls on them. Oh, God. And, and, and just like that internal way, and then, I mean, Leafpool herself kind of buys into that as well, because, like, when Jay Feather is born blind, Leafpool is like, is this my punishment for for breaking bro- the warrior code? code? And yeah. that that's just all kinds of fucked up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess... There's a possibility that these things aren't portrayed as accurate, as actually accurate. Like, they may be what the different characters think in their point of view, but they're not portrayed as accurate. But also, at the same time, the Warrior Cats books are, like, all 
first person point of view so yeah that's all the audience has to go on and like given the other things that star clan has done yeah well, i wouldn't put I, it past I, I, I would not put it past star clan yeah fuck same. star clan down with star clan i'm with soul except for the abandoning the elders and kids to fend for themselves why part. is that like why is that a normal progression? You lose religion, you obviously hate, like, your elders. Yes, like, the instant you're like, actually, Star Clan kind of sucks. Like, I mean, look how they gave Tiger Star nine lives, but they refused to give Night Star nine lives. Mm-hmm. <sighs> like, Broken Star also became, de- like, leader, despite killing his own father in order to get that position. And, like, his father would have been there at the ceremony. But this is way off track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is way off Although I guess Broken Star is also disabled. So, because he has that broken tail. Yeah. Well, okay, but back on track. Back to mm, Jay yeah, Feather. The sorry. one thing I like, unlike in earlier books, is Jay Feather is always thinking of ways to accommodate uh, the other disabled cats. Like, when... Briarlight loses the use of her hind legs, he's the one that goes out of his way to come up with new exercises that she can do so that she'd be able to walk on her two legs. Oh yeah, he also and, helps Cinderheart with right. like, water therapy. Yeah, he's constantly thinking of new ways to help people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of Briar Light, that's the next on the list. Yay. I I feel really conflicted about her. Uh I mean she's characterized as positive and funny. But she feels a lot like she's falling into the whole the disabled person is there to cheer everybody else up. Mm. And then she also after she becomes disabled, she goes through that process the same story arc all the other ones go through where she's like hating herself and like oh no my life is over they do always go through that story arc don't they yeah like i mean i'm glad it ends with everyone being like don't worry you are worthy of life but also they do always go through that story arc yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, although I guess in the books, Briar like can be seen as like a foil to Jay Feather. Yeah, that's another thing. You see the clan actively making accommodations for Briar Light, mm-hmm. but then they just kind of treat Jay Feather as more of a pariah until he becomes Medicine Cat, and it's kind of like, okay, Briar Light is positive and happy almost all the time. Minus the bit where she was, like, hating herself. Mm. And Jay Feather is grumpy, so we're gonna make accommodations for the happy, good disabled person who is grateful for even being able to continue to live yeah. instead of grumpy Jay Feather. That's, that's how it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so not great. And, and, like, Cinderheart, who's a friend of Briarlight, is talking to Briarlight, is like, we'll find a way for you to be useful, because you're more determined and braver than any cat I know. And then, like, all the conversations tend to go along that lines, like, oh, you're brave and determined, like, you'll find a way to live on. And right. it's just like there's more of an emphasis on the attitude a disabled character can have than them actually being a person. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm glad all the cat story or people in general who are able to I have mean, a positive outlook about their uh, situation, you know, but also. You don't need that to be worthy of help and life and whatnot. Yeah, and then there was that one conversation Briarlight has with Bramblestar, 
about like I'm fed up with being treated as if I'm special. I just want to be like every other cat. Mm. I have so many conflicting feelings about that statement too mm. because there are problems with being treated like you're special and different that can make you feel separated from everything but at the same time you have to be able to acknowledge somebody's disability in order to accommodate for them yeah like it's a complicated conversation that I don't think Warrior Cats is equipped to handle. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Although I guess as, like, a character beat, it's alright. Yeah. Yeah. And then another problem is when Briarlight goes up to Star Clan, she's completely healed and free mm -hmm. of suffering. And I, I think so that's... Glad. I mean, that's one thing, another thing that bothers me about Star Clan is when a cat goes to Star Clan, they're in the form that they were at their happiest. So that's kind of like, oh, Briarlight was never actually happy after she became disabled and was paralyzed. Yeah. She never experienced happiness again, even though she was like, an apprentice so only what seven eight months old sorry moons old <laughs> at that point and then she mm -hmm. like lived for years after that no 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 it was just before it was just before she was never happy mm-hmm yeah so who's next on the list uh hopfoot or as he's known in the books, Deadfoot. They do have a habit of renaming characters after their disability, don't they? Yeah! Like, Crooked Star's warrior name was Crooked Jaw, because, you see, as a kit, he broke his jaw, so it was permanently crooked. Well, with Hop Hopfoot had a crippled leg, so you can, you can see the wheels turning into, like, yeah, yeah, dead foot. Dead foot. And, I don't know, it just really feels wrong, because when his name is changed, there's a lot of protests from the other cats in the clan. Yeah, like I would hope so. It's like, Heather like, Star, you can't name him after what's wrong with him. Yeah, like, it's kind of like when Blue Star named Brightheart Lost, Lost Face. Face. Like... I mean, fortunately, Brightheart got a new name, but, like... Yeah, but I think it's a bit more insidious in uh, Hotfoot's case, because his name is changed from Hopkit to Deadpaw, and while well, everyone else is protesting, he's the one going like, Oh no, it's fine! I I'm, I'm okay with this! My foot may be dead, but the rest of me is alive! And kind of, like, justifying it. Well, I'm glad he was okay with it. Yeah. But then there was the whole lead up to him becoming an apprentice where Heather Star and um, Reed Feather were going to be like, um, no, he can't be an apprentice. He has a, he has the twisted foot. Mm. So like he'd ha either have to become like what, a medicine cat or go live with just, the elders. Just with the elders. Just go straight to the elders. Do not pass go. Do not collect a hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's Tall Tale that has to convince them that he's able to be an apprentice. So it's not fr from like any effort of Hopkit. Like, He's not shown to be, like, I don't know, exceptionally lively, despite the twisted foot. And well, no, he's still constantly out there, like, practicing his crouches and, mm. and like, but, pouncing on leaves and whatnot. But it still takes, like, a third party to approach the leader and be like, oh, actually, he's not a useless, like, being... Well, another thing that bothers me is that that's not really done for the sake of 
Hopkins character. Mm -hmm. It's more done to show at that point that Tall Tale is really ready to commit to the clan. Ah, uh, yeah, so he's being used as... A prop. In, uh, an inciting incident for an, the main character. Yeah. I mean, what's good, though, is that when you read the first arc, um, where Deadfoot really first appears... Mm. You don't really notice anything. Like, he's treated just like any of the other non-main Wind Clan characters. Yeah, there's no, like, special emphasis on, like... I mean, of course, his in his description... It mentions... Fireheart recognizes the, that there's a twisted paw. Yeah, but then he's, like, still the Wind Clan deputy. Like, he's still an authority figure who's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Brightheart! Ah, yes, Brightheart. Brightheart's an apprentice who gets attacked by the dogs that mm. Tiger Star sends and gets renamed as Lost Face. Yeah. And I mean, Blue Star was going through it when she named Brightheart. That's Heart true. That, so. She was. Um, but what I think is really annoying is not so much Brightheart being renamed Lost Face, but the way Blue Star talks about it. About, like, she mm. has given her life in service of her clan. Let us remember what, what, um, Star Clan has taken, taken from, from us. us. And Brightheart's like, stop telling people I'm dead! Well, to be fair... They all thought she might die at that point. It was like, a, right. let's n re give her a warrior name before she actually dies. <sighs> Which, I guess is something, but then Blue Star ruined it. Yeah, and it it's just so friggin' mm -hmm. annoying! Yeah. Like, although Brightheart and Cloudtail's relationship is very sweet. It's yeah. cute. I have feelings about it, though. Um, mm -hmm. there's a huge emphasis, like, after Bright Paul becomes lost face and then is healing, like, all the other cats in the clan are avoiding her and, like, not interacting with her or, or staring at her mangled face. Mm -hmm. And, and then, um, the only cat that's reaching out to her is Cloudtail. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of feels like her mangled face is again used to show how horrible and evil and Tiger Star is and how real the threat is to the clan, mm -hmm. but it's also being used as a step in a romance arc to get Cloudtail and Brightheart together. Yeah. We don't really get much from Brightheart's self-view. Yeah, and Cloudtail is more of a B character, and Brightheart is at that point, like, more of a C character. Yeah. Yeah. What I don't get is, okay, so Cloudtail trains Brightheart with new hunting and fighting techniques, but, like, He's not missing an eye. Why is he the one coming up with these new hunting and fighting mm -hmm. techniques when one eye is in the warrior den at this time and she became an apprentice even though she was born blind in one eye? Oh, so she... So she already has these hunting and fighting techniques. Yeah, and also, like, if they already have that developed, that should just be, like, taught to everybody. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that becomes canon... Until later. Until Blue Star's Prophecy, mm -hmm. which is yeah. written after the first arc. But, like, looking back at it, mm -hmm. it makes yeah. it weird that like, Brightheart didn't go to One Eye and be like, train me. Yeah, like, even just them mentioning, like, Cloudtail and Brightheart were talking to One Eye, like, at least once would have kind of helped with that. Yeah. Yeah, because 
she had to discover all these new hunting and fighting techniques as an apprentice on her own. Why wouldn't she share this? Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's like the whole problem of like Cloudtail continually pushing Brightheart when Brightheart is like, no, I, I need a break. And, and it kind of has to go with the whole idea that like disabled people don't know what they're talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, they don't really get what they're capable of. They don't understand right. their own limits. They're operating out of, like, fear or, like, mm -hmm. negative emotions more than anything else. And, and that's... so can't have an objective view of themselves. That's so true. And it's especially frustrating because, like, when I say, I can't do something, I'm not using that as, like, a value call on myself or, like, mm -hmm. talking down on myself. It's like... No, I literally can't do that. So pushing yeah. myself to do that is gonna cause problems. Yeah, like if you need a break, you need a break. Exactly. I mean, that's the way it should be approached and seen. But it's not. Mm. Because people with chronic, dis chronic illnesses and disabilities aren't believed. Yeah, and I don't know, like that does... I mean, I do like Cloudtail as a character, but he can be a bit thoughtless sometimes, like, um, in the second arc with Daisy and all that. Yeah. Like, Brightheart literally moves into the medicine cat den and, like, sort of becomes a medicine cat apprentice for a bit because of how, like, Cloudtail is, like, sort of ignoring her. Yeah. Though there is one good instance, um, Firestar has Brightheart teach every apprentice her fighting techniques. Oh yeah, because when they're going up against Blood Clan, they need like everything they can get. Yeah, and that just makes sense. Like with the rate that cats become injured and disfigured mm -hmm. in the clans Which, it just makes sense to continually passing these techniques yeah. down so that every time someone does become injured or loses an eye or an ear or whatever you don't have another story arc going like but can I actually be a warrior oh no mm -hmm. because you already have yeah, these like, techniques like when you combine the whole the cats face a lot of dangers they frequently get into like fights with the other clans and they also have great medicine that can prevent them from dying, but can't necessarily heal every injury. It's like, yeah, they're all going to be disabled very quickly at that mm, rate. Yeah. So it just makes sense to have these techniques circling. And like, mm. why didn't let him train Brayheart? I'm never, like, ah, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. All right, so Crooked Star. Ah, uh, yes. Storm Kit. Yeah. Yeah, so Crooked Star started out as Storm Kit, but after he breaks his jaw, Rainflower, his mother, is like, you have to change his name to Crooked Kit. Wait, his mother insists on that? Oh my god. Yeah, but his mother is kind of like the villain of the story. Okay, yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense. And, like, almost, and the leader and, like, almost the entire clan protests, but they can't overrule the mother's right to name her kids, I guess. Uh, I guess. And, I mean, yeah. One good thing about Crooked Star is, unlike a lot of the other disabled cats, when they die and go to Star Clan, they become healed. I think Crooked Star is one of the only ones that keeps his injury. Because yeah. could you imagine the message that would send that he was only happy when he was a kit, even though he lived most of his life with a crooked jaw? Yeah, and honestly, Crooked Star's life was pretty tragic, but for, like, reasons completely unrelated to being disabled. Like, yeah. He just goes through some shit. It should have been Crooked Jaw and Blue Fur. Instead of oak heart and blue fur. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm I not guess. saying. I'm just saying. I guess. Um. 
Yeah, but it all leads up to this moment where Crooked Star finally confronts his mother, like, after getting kicked out of the clan. Mm. Um, he becomes, after his name gets changed to Crooked Kit, Rainflower doesn't want anything to do with him, so uh. he runs away. Yep. And he eventually comes back when he's more apprentice age. And he gets to confront her. Mm-hmm. That's good. And it's a really good moment where he's like, I'm sorry I can't make you proud of me. You'll never make me ashamed of who I am or what I look like. Which is such a huge difference than other cats who get disfigured. Mm-hmm. Like, Brayheart spends most of her of um, our point of view chapters worrying about being ugly and disfigured and stuff mm-hmm. like that and, and he's just like fuck you mm-hmm. and I really like that and plus I think he's like one of the like I mean obviously there's other disabled characters who are main characters like Jay Feather but mm-hmm. yeah but like Crooked Star also is like one of the few disabled characters who do get their own story just yeah. In and of themselves. Yes. I, I really wish we got more of that. Mm-hmm. Instead of having the disabled characters be like side characters in people's story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Longtail. Yes. My boy, Longtail! He shouldn't have retired and he should have been made deputy. I will die on this hill. Yeah, I mean. I was talking get... about in like the second series after Graystripe disappears? Yes. Or even before Graystripe was made deputy. Like, I don't understand why De- Graystripe was made deputy, but that's yeah. that's a whole other discussion. He was made deputy because he was Firestar's buddy, and Firestar loves him, okay? Oh, Grey Fire! <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. But it wasn't Firestar who chose, it was White Storm. Oh, yeah. White Actually, Storm was dying and was like, the person who should replace me is Graystripe, who betrayed the clan multiple times, and not the cat who continually proved their loyalty despite being friends with Tiger Star. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. But, yeah, so Longtail becomes... Um, he becomes blinded after he gets wounded by a rabbit and his wounds get infected. That is the, that is the most, I, I can't describe how sudden that plot beat is. Like, he's just, he's just blind now. Deal with it. Yeah, and and there's like a whole fight to get him to go to the elder's den because he's like, I can continue to be a warrior. Like, I can use my ears my sense of smell, my whiskers, like, I yeah, can still like, train and learn. Like, maybe if, even if he couldn't necessarily do it them himself, like, if they could have had a buddy system or something, mm-hmm. like, that would still work. Yeah, like, Fallow Fern got to continue being a warrior after she started going deaf. Yeah. And they formed, like, a sort of buddy system with her. Mm-hmm. But that was Sky Clan. Sky Clan's the better clan. <laughs> they yeah. don't they don't have all these dumb rules. Yeah, I mean they keep on getting driven out of their camp and their home. But yeah. I do like Sky Clan. Yeah, so Longtail is apparently well enough to make the journey to the lake, but he's not well enough to be a warrior. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. And then he has a tree fall on him. In, like, the third series. So, like, he's around for a while, but he still just has a tree fall on him. But it was the whole way that whole discussion between Firestar and all the elders with Firestar trying to convince Longtail to go. Mm. It's like, there's other elders there. But they are too old and weak to make such a perilous journey. It's like, I guess, but also, yeah. Yeah, so he Firestar is like, you may have lost your eyes, but your ears and your sense of smell are as good as any warriors. Please come with us. Oh, but it wasn't good enough back when he could have remained a warrior. Yeah, no, it was not. 
it was not but it also just kind of like has this whole sense of like all the more disabled cats can just die and so you're and, still like, pretty good it was the elders who are like saying oh we'll just slow you down on the journey you'll have mm -hmm. to care for us and we're old and weak and frail there's a we'll lot just of, die in the new forest there's a the lot of uh, self-sacrifice expected on their parts like yeah you're supposed to be fine with like certain death like either you slowly starve or you get run over by a truck those are your options although maybe they got like found by humans and taken to a shelter or something but yeah Eh, also, Longtail should have helped also, Brightheart. They could have just Paul. taken all the elders with them to like Raven Pond Barley's Barn. Yeah, that would have made the most sense, and then they would have then, lived out their day eating all those fat rats mm -hmm. and like Raven Pond Barley. Yeah, the best couple would have been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, Longtail should have helped Brightheart train J. Paul. Yeah, like. I, I don't understand why that didn't happen. Yeah. Yep. Alright, this one is from... Um... Dawn of the Clans. Hmm. Which hasn't been pirated yet, so I haven't read it. I mean, you shouldn't pirate. I mean... What, 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 hmm. what, would you steal a jar of peanut butter? <laughs> oh no, that would be wrong. Very yeah, wrong. exactly. You Pir should be ashamed of yourself. Pirating is wrong. You, know, and you should you do ignore that. Sure. the many archives. Although it's interesting it's because, I mean, obviously pirating independent authors' works is r pretty bad. But, like, Warrior Cats is a product. It is not written so much as it is produced. Yeah. To be sold. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like... The ghostwriters aren't going to be paid any more if I buy the book. Although I do want the books, so I might have to buy them. <laughs> I do. Same. Alright, so Pink Eyes. Um, they're a cat from Dawn of the Clans. Mm. They don't really play much of a role. But one thing that did bother me when I was going over their wiki page... Uh, where was that it mentioned that their poor eyesight had strengthened his other senses I mean isn't I, that kind of a myth like that is a myth yes mm -hmm. it is a myth um, and it really bothers me blind people don't hear better than yeah. seeing people they just kind of like learn to recognize more because yeah. they're relying more on their hearing, they just so learn they're using to it more. Pay more attention to that, right? And oh, it, it's just one of the things yeah. that bothers me. Okay, so moving on to another one that I haven't read yet. Shadow Sight is from the Broken Code, so, mm. so the latest. Yeah. Which hasn't been pirated yet either. Somebody do that for me, please. Um, but he's had epilepsy ever since he was a kid, and his seizures give him visions. Um, it's one of those things. Exactly, and that's another thing that bothers me, because, like, there's a common myth floating around that, like, for people who deal with psychosis or seizures or visions or things like that, is that it's often like miraculous like like yeah you might have a debilitating illness but at least you get these nifty visions yeah Good for you yeah and that can lead like a lot of people to not seek out medical care when they do need it i guess that's not so much a problem because there's nothing that the medicine cats have mm -hmm. that could treat epilepsy but outside yeah. of the book and, like, the message that people are absorbing, it kind of falls along the whole trope of the miraculous visions and psychosis. And, like, medicine takes that away, so you shouldn't have medicine. Mm -hmm. Which, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... I... But, like, one thing I was wondering, which is why I was so desperate to get my hands on Tawny Pelt's clan, is the way that his epilepsy is portrayed because there's certain, like, tropes that go along with people with epilepsy that, like, it causes them to be violent and lash out and hurt others. And I just wanted to see, like, what happens with his, but I couldn't get my the, hands on Tawny Pelt's And plan. I'm guessing the wiki isn't at detailed enough Yeah, no, to it, get it's that. not like this is the exact way that his epilepsy is portrayed. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, eh, I guess it doesn't matter as much. Yeah, and he kind of falls into this whole pattern of disabled people getting powers in order to, like, compensate for their disability, like Toph is earthbending, Jay mm -hmm. Feather's dreamwalking, Daredevil's echolocation ability... Yeah. Like, all these sorts of things, uh, Echo's, um, also kind of, like, Echo location Who's ability. Echo? Um, she's a character from the Daredevil comics. She's uh. deaf, but she's able to, like, like, oh, read no. minds or something? Uh. I haven't... Okay. So. I haven't read it in a while, so I don't remember exactly. But, but the whole pattern, like, oh, you're disabled, but not really, because you have these powers that overcome this disability. Mm. Yeah, and then there's another problem. Is Shadow Sight is literally a pawn of Ashfur and Star Clan. Like, StarClan's the one sending his visions, and then when StarClan stops communicating, it's Ash for manipulating Shadow Sight into letting Bramble Star die. Ah, uh, yeah. So, through the abilities that accompany the disability, he is used as a pawn. Yeah. Again, like all the other disabled characters we mentioned thus far. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Just a prop in someone else's story. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping that he gets a chance to redeem himself after Ashford convinces him to try some medication or something that'll let Bramble Star die. And mm -hmm. then after Ashford gets captured and is like, You have to let me go so I can save Bramble Star's body. And then he get, believes him then. Uh, He's just really na naive, it seems like. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, another problem with Shadow Sight is, well, I was researching him and trying to find out how fandom in general feel. There were a lot of instances on people on different fan forums calling him Shadow Shake. Yeah, I can see how that's, like, not a great way to refer to a character with epilepsy. It made me want to commit all the violence. Mm. I will hunt them all down. <laughs> yes, sounds fun. Yeah, because, like, Shadow Sight doesn't care whether or not he's called Shadow Shake or whatever. He's, he's a character yeah. in a book. But, but other people... with epilepsy yeah. m will see that. And it's creating a not safe environment because it's creating one where, like, someone's epilepsy is treated as a joke. Mm. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Alright. Finley! Also from the latest series, so I haven't read it. Um, but he's missing a portion of his tail. He gets caught in a fox trap. Oh, like, and then knows. And then it has to get, like, amputated. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I read, I was able to find, like, 
chapters from the book, unlike with the other ones. So, and it kind of makes me angry. Uh, what? Dupaw is his sibling, and like, when Dupaw is talking about Finpaw, it's like, I get the idea that he's enjoying feeling sorry for himself. It's like, he just had to lose a limb. Um, he probably gets to feel sorry for himself, even if he's not having the right attitude. Yeah, exactly, and disabled people have to deal with that kind of attitude all the time. Like, oh, just stay positive and you'll feel better, and it's like, no, that's not going to make a difference. Yeah. And like, oh, stop moping around and just get out in the sun. Like, no. Yeah. Like, have you considered yoga or drinking water? I'm, never. I mean, I'm glad that they told us about that. <laughs> I'd have never considered that. I've never drank water water before in my life what is this thing yes and now that you have drunk the water you are healed i am healed oh my yeah. gosh so that was like really really annoying and then mm -hmm. of course uh finley goes through the whole hating himself for his injury yeah. to finally accepting it and whatever. So he's like, I'm never gonna be able to hunt. I'm going to be the worst warrior ever. How can I ever be any good? And it's... Doesn't he exist around the same time as Barry knows, who also has an amputated tail? Oh my god, he does! <laughs> can you imagine saying that and then sitting... Three feet away, oh, yeah. Barry knows. It was like, um, I'm right here, guys. I and Poppy Frost is just like, it's okay, dear. It's okay. He's like, yeah. but I'm right here. It's like I trained and I was able to be a warrior without a tail. It's fine. Like, like Finn Paul works with Twig Paul to learn to figure out new hunting techniques, but, but Barry Nellis has already gone through this exact same arc. When he lost his tail, they, he had to figure out new ways to balance and new ways to hunt because of it. Like, it is interesting how they always go through that. Like, oh, I have some disadvantage, so now I have to work with someone who is fortunately not uh, disabled like I am in order to figure out how to compensate for it, but there are people who are cat, other cats who have had that same issue, like right over there. Like they're just go look, turn your yeah, head just, ninety degrees. Okay, um, uh, on Finn Paws, um, I don't know behalf or whatever. He started in Sky Clan before he transferred uh, to Thunder yeah. Clan. But once he transfers to ThunderClan, he it's still when he's an apprentice. Yeah, it's just so he w might see Barry knows the warrior and be mm -hmm. like, "Huh? Can you train me?" <laughs> like, yeah, something. like honestly. Instead, what happens is he works with Twigpaw, who's his love interest. So we have that whole thing where a disability is used as like a step in a romance. So it, uh, yeah. so far it's twice, but there are disabled more Disabled people, the disabled characters themselves aren't shown as being able to advocate for themselves, but rather require the love interest to do so. Yeah. Like, and I get that people do need support and whatnot, but also, like, they can also like, advocate for themselves. Right, Ren? <laughs> yeah, I can advocate for myself. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very annoying. Um, but it is, actually, Finpaw and Twigpaw, at least from the snippets of the book that I read, are kind of adorable. Because, mm. like, after Finpaw goes through the whole, I'll never be a warrior, I'll never be any good, blah blah blah, arc, again. Um... It, he's joking with Twig Paul, like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm lumbering around like a clumsy badger and stuff like that, and it's really adorable. Mm. It's so adorable. 
Okay, this one, the next one's from Dawn of the Clans. Another one I haven't read. Just mm -hmm. Please pirate this book. Because uh, it only goes, all the sites that I found with pirated books only go up to, like, the third arc. Mm -hmm. And they only have yeah the super editions. And I need the novellas. And I need Dawn of the Clans. And I need the broken code. So make this happen. <laughs> but it's um, focusing on moth flight who was confirmed on Twitter by one of the errands to have ADD. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense for how she's generally characterized. Yeah. Um, Mothlight was the first Wing Clan medicine cat. Mm -hmm. um, she was the one who discovered the Moonstone. But one thing that did bother me was how she was continually called scatterbrained by the narration and like she's perpetually distracted yeah a and then moth flight um when like saying someone is flighty is kind of like a recurrent insult that people mm. with ADD and ADHD have to deal with and then the way that she finds the moonstone is that she's lured away by a moth so she doesn't, like, have a see it. I mean, I guess if she does see a sign, then it is that moth. But, like, it is kind of... Like, oh, butterfly! Yeah. Like, yeah. squirrel! Like, that whole way that people with ADHD mm -hmm. and ADD are portrayed. And that kind of makes me feel, eh. Yeah, it's sort of very stereotypical. Yeah, I mean, but also it. at the same time, she's one of the most important cats because she's the first medicine cat. She's yeah. the one who finds the moonstone, gets the message from the ancestors that are like, uh, oh, here are the other cats who also should be medicine cats. And she's the one that kind of writes the medicine code. Mm -hmm. She's the one that's like, no medicine cats can have kits or mates or whatever. So she's the one to blame for our, like, you know, recurring arc like that. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna stop this. 